All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Hey, welcome to episode 458 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. We're live. I interrupted Daniel. We were just chatting before we came on the air today. He's like, you know, what we need to do more episodes on my books is I was just showing off. I got physical proofs in today for mask hysteria. I'll just do a quick flip through if I can. It's not going to show up so good. Um, in fact, it shows up terribly on this, but that's the whole idea. You know, it. It's coming along. There's a, still a lot of work to do, um, but I wanted to see how it looked using one of the print uh, providers that I use. I also wanted to have this for Nashville. So if you're going to be at the Rock and Pod next weekend, I'm going to have a couple of copies that you can flip through just to see where I'm at and where I'm going and what's in my mind. And then he said, well, what, what about this other one I've been talking about? Well, volume two, 50th anniversary. Uh, God. <laughs> is essentially ready to go um i need to get a proper cover photo for it and i had to fix a couple of things uh, but it is uh, otherwise intact and all ready to go hey lonnie so we've got st louis kiss lonnie we've got 69th blizzard ken i suppose i should open up the chat to see if anyone's actually even watching us um yes, bill, bill phelps. phelps hey guys phelps. thanks for joining us bill uh, Mark, uh, Marcus Almighty, Mark, and Daniel. We're going to go through some board topics today. I've done my show and tell. Ken, did you get something or find something interesting to show the class today? Well, I did find something that uh, I had stashed away for a long time, I guess. It's, it's just, it's the only one I have of this type of item, uh, which is a, it's a uh, cassette, eight track, or eight track tape, that is. Unmasked. Of nice. unmasked. Nice. Still and sealed, it's, and it's yeah, it's it's still uh, it's still sealed and everything. Uh, is that right? Upside down. Nice. Upside yeah, sealed. that's nice. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I was looking at the tracks. The only track that got broken up, you know how you play a yeah. track and then it, and it got, you get the clicking and everything. Clicky, clicky, every fades out, much. fades in, kind of thing or whatever. Uh, talk to me. It says, "Talk to me, part one." At two <laughs> minutes and sixteen seconds in. And then it mm -hmm. finishes the final two minutes on program two. Um, it's funny, each, yeah, I guess each each of the four programs are 10 minutes and five seconds. So I guess that's broken out like that. I can't remember. Uh, you know, I had some in the 80s, not 80s, 70s, a few, but then I got off of those eight tracks pretty quickly. But yeah, it's kind of a, you know, a cool thing. It's a good collector piece. Yeah, there are a few eight tracks out there that have yeah, slightly right. different, um, well, features, shall we say, to the or different sequence. orders, right? Well, different track sequences, yeah. and also different. Some have been kind of stretched out; yeah. they were longer fade outs in order to make them fit on that tape. Exactly. Are you gonna go yeah. deep diving now, Ken? To collect all the variations of the unmasked eight. Yeah, track. go ahead and go try and find a working eight track uh, player. Oh yeah, yeah. No, and, and then see what you'll them. pay to get an animalize or lick it up ones, which are oh, record club only. Yeah, I'm waiting, <laughs> waiting for the eight track resurgence before I do that. Ooh, yeah, people come in. So before we get, we're going to be doing board topics today, and everything's pretty much going to revolve around the final fifty tickets going on sale this week. But before we do, Mark, why don't you give everyone a, a quick update about what's going on in Project Gemini Land? Because you started dropping some hints at um, some pretty cool stuffs coming. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. So my next Project Gemini album, which is called uh, "What Lies Beyond," comes out April. 17th, I think it is. Uh, but no, it's uh, March 17th is the first single. I believe April 21st is the album. Uh, first single is called Cyber Wonderland. Uh, it'll be out on digital form. It's going to be on the record, obviously, and it'll be in CD form and vinyl again this time. Uh, it's going to be an interesting record. It's four songs, two songs aside, but there's like a 15 minute song on one side and 11 minute song on the other side, plus some other lengthy stuff so it's not like a short record it's it's sort of like a normal length vinyl album and with the vinyl you're going to get included a bonus disc similar to like what you see like 
when you, you know, like when re, when Yes re released Quest last last time, they included like a disc, like a bonus disc of tracks on it, right? Oh, cool. And uh, that'll be included in with the vinyl this time. Similar, it'll be like this. It'll just be in like a little slip sleeve like this for the bonus tracks, because I think that the bonus tracks are are fantastic. I really enjoyed them, but I didn't want to. I couldn't put them on the vinyl, but I didn't want to leave them off either. So I figured this would be a good alternate way of doing it. And the CD version is going to have a bonus track on it, too. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to make it a little bit more appealing uh, for people who like the CD medium as well. And a lot of people have been very uh, cool with that idea. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So uh, cool. keep your eye out on the Project Gemini Bandcamp uh, this coming week or so, because I'll be putting up little notices of when to start the pre-orders and stuff like that. All right, let's dive in. Um, I, I'm not going to have you answer that question about what your uh, Indie Cult 777, do you have a favorite Project Gemini song? Maybe you can think about that and let us know at the end of the show, Mark. <laughs> um, you know, this week's been generally about purchasing of tickets. Tickets went on sale for the KISS Online or KISS Army pre-sale on Monday. Concurrently, there were platinum ticket pre-sales going on with dynamic pricing. Concurrently, oh, yeah. there were other gouge fests going on. I, I mean, I was online at 7 a.m. Pacific for the uh, KISS Army. Kiss Army one. I wanted one seat in the house to both shows. That's all I wanted. It wasn't much to ask. And seven o'clock hits. I've been in the waiting room and it says 2000 plus are ahead of you. Like, wow. what the fuck? Uh, you know, so a, a little bit of a shock. And it, I think it Jeez. took about 15 minutes before no. he got in. I'm I'm texting with friends and we're That's all crazy. in the same boat. We're all putting our numbers on. I'm 897 now. I'm 665, mm -hmm. you know, and et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> as you wait to get in and you finally get in. And as fast as you can click on tickets, they're disappearing. They go into your cart and it says, whoops, another. It's like that freaking MasterCard commercial. <laughs> the guy, the old geezer oh, with the fishing pole. Oh, you nearly had it. Oh. <laughs> You nearly had it. Oh, tough shit. Oh, <laughs> you're a boss. Please reauthenticate. You know, so it oh, was oh, all man. sorts of mayhem. I finally got a ticket to um, the first show on the first, and I was still waiting to get into the second room. Um, I was using a different browser because I wasn't sure which one was going to go first. Finally mm -hmm. get into the other one, and after a whole bunch of I'm playing whack-a-mole, but I'm the fucking mole getting no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> um, I finally got a ticket to the second show. So I clocked out. I was happy. They weren't where I wanted, but I kept telling myself, I got a seat in the fucking house. Julian, you, you, you talked a little bit about making some sort of Kiss FAQ podcast ish thing around those final concerts. Mm hmm. Yes. Can you can you can you explain a little bit what you were thinking? Can you elaborate? Elaborate. No, exactly. no because December <laughs> no. Is, no. December December's a long way away. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so your your wheels but, just start spinning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What so, what yeah. is more important to me really than the shows, which will just provide a soundtrack to gathering in electric communion, is all the people that I've met because of Kiss. Yeah. There are four of you on my screen. And a whole ton of you who are watching this show or who True are commenting that. from Massachusetts and other places, some of whom I've met in person, some of who I know from their IDs, who they are and what they look like. That is what KISS is about to me more so now than watching Gene, Eric, Tommy or Ace or whomever perform. It's the soundtrack <laughs> and the people I've met. Um so I want to have a, a get together in the afternoon before the shows, but I don't know how that might play out because number one, I don't want to end up in a bar getting Kaylee before a kiss show when there's all these Thank sites, you, there are tons of sites around there that you can go to for pictures. I'd rather be getting pictures on the dress to kill corner with friends who I may not see again for many years. So that's what it's about. Alface, but, alface. Yeah, alface. But who else tried to get tickets? Lonnie, did you roll the dice this week and uh, go for any shows? I did. I uh, I know on Saturday, when last time we had a show, I was kind of like, well, you know, it's going to depend on how things shake out in the fall. And I started thinking about it. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try for New York. If I can, it's the last, it's the last 
um, shows. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna see what happens. And I told myself I'm not gonna get disappointed if I don't get them. Mm. But if I can get them, and I'm gonna be able to be in the house for the the last show, December second, I'm at least gonna try. So, you know, I I uh, sat down at my desk at about eight thirty and logged in Kiss Online, got my pre-sale code all ready to go, and just like Julian, nine o'clock hits, and there's two thousand plus people in front of me. And I'm like, that's crazy. And I'm like, okay. Uh, and I thought to myself, okay, probably, I, I thought, honestly, probably not going to happen if there's 2,000 people in front of me at this arena. And it sits at 2,000 plus, sits at 2,000 plus, finally starts creeping, finally starts creeping a little more. And I'm in the room like, oh, okay. And there ain't much on the, the screen to my right. So I, like Julian, click on the ticket. Ticket setter there, you know. Sorry, another fan beat you to him. I must have clicked on that screen on the right hand side a hundred different times, <laughs> and to, to the to the point where I wasn't even paying attention to what I was clicking on and what price range I was clicking on. Just whatever is available, I click on it. Sorry, click on it. Sorry, click on it. Sorry. I got you know I have that on one monitor and I'm trying to focus on a little work on the other monitor and just going through it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And then boom, ooh, it took me to another screen. After about 45 minutes, about 9.45 my time, it took a spin on itself for 45 minutes, took me to another screen. I'm like, oh, I, 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 oh my gosh, I, I, I might actually be able to do this. And I looked at it and it was $2,700 for two tickets. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> oh my God. And I thought, and and the timer is at the top top right, and Counting two down. minutes and thirty seconds to put in your information, or these are going to be lost. And I'm like, Ooh. um, <laughs> I got six I, tickets for that price <laughs> and kid, some change. I in. kid, <laughs> I kid on this show a lot about my wife, but it's all in fun. She's great. She's absolutely fantastic and supports me in any kind of adventure I want to go on, anything I want to do. But I have <laughs> two minutes and 30 seconds to make a decision if I'm going to do this or not. And no. I can't spend $2,700 without asking her, hey, I'm going to spend $2,700 on two KISS tickets for a concert in New York. I can't do it. Um, Eric, I spent – it. It's roughly the amount of what I spent for four season tickets for the Bengals. And that's nine home games for four seats. And this yeah. is two tickets for an hour and a half. Right. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. I, when I put it in that perspective, I can't justify mm -hmm. it. So I said, you know what? I tried. I can at least say I tried, but I can't do it. So I backed out of it. And then it's back to the same screen, same screen, same screen. I'm like, I'm done. I got to start getting some work done that. So that was my experience. And I still stick to the point where if I was going to go to a show, I let me try the last show just because it'd be pretty historic. historic. Or you, you could have you could have bought them and then turned around and scalped them near the end. Now, Mark, I thought about that. But here's the, now, Mark, I thought about that. But I thought $2,700, am I that, – that's a big gamble. Yeah, it is big, yeah. If it if it was a few hundred dollars, that's that's a, I yeah, think yeah, I could yeah. at least get my money back for what I spent on. But twenty seven hundred, there's probably a Kiss fan that missed out that would probably pony up that kind of cash mm -hmm. for it. But mm -hmm. I can't guarantee that, and I can't come home from work and tell my wife, "Oh, don't worry, we're gonna scalp these tickets and make our money back for twenty seven hundred." <laughs> so I can't. you know, that's too yeah. expensive. My God, too much. you know, I, I, I'm. I'm not that big of a gambler. I can't do it. No. Man. You know, I, I thought it was quite expensive this time around when I bought tickets, but I got six tickets for like $400, and that was expensive. <laughs> I thought that, that was crazy. That's a great deal. Chicken shit money. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe yeah. I'm doing oh, well. the math wrong. I have to... <laughs> <laughs> I have to count that once again. <laughs> yeah, I think you might, you might want to add a zero. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, it, it, it's been insane. Ken, did you even look? 
uh, tickets for any of the California shows, shows, pardon me, um, Hollywood Bowl. I mean, I, I eventually got priced out of even doing Hollywood Bowl because I went back the next day. And this is my one recommendation to anyone who has not managed to get tickets. Don't give up. Go back in. I went back in the next day and I got floor where I wanted. Uh, I'm not going to say it was a great price, but it was one that I was able to clench and accept. Um, I clenched hard and the diamond popped out. Um, but again, I, I was happy. I did go back in. I went in today to the Chase pre-sale. I was able to pick up a pair of tickets for some friends who had uh, missed out as well. And, you know, I transferred those over. And, you know, Ticketmaster is so screwed up that um, it, it gave me an error when I transferred it. And so, you know, um, and then it sent me emails later on saying that it had gone through and been accepted. So do not give up. Do not accept because they're playing games with ticket allotments are not all put out for sale at any one time. It is dynamic. They are releasing tickets in batches. They're not going to let any of these sales have no tickets. And there are also people who are putting tickets in their carts, Lonnie which then mm -hmm. locks those tickets for a short while for, for other while. people. Yeah. And then either they don't fulfill the transaction or their transaction is declined by their credit card or wife. True um, mm -hmm. you, know, so. <laughs> you know, when I, when I was buying tickets, I had my girlfriend as well. See, uh, you know, I, it, was, it was kind of a throwback to 97 when I got my first tickets, you know, they sold out Stockholm stadium in, mm -hmm. you know, less than an hour. I think it was almost like tag stadium, you know, uh, but I remember trying to get those tickets. It was like that once again. It was kind of cool. And I miscalculated. I, I at least spent, let's see, a thousand dollars. A thousand, a thousand uh, dollars. Math. I, I'm teaching Swedish uh, and other things, not math, thankfully, because that's not my strong side. Yeah, and that's the whole thing, is that there are other shows in this run. They're doing the whole Canadian run. Uh, Jeff Kinsley, thank you for mentioning mm -hmm. Vancouver. I was there as well at the first show. I was contemplating was flying cool. up there for another show and also to have a couple of days in Vancouver to actually see the city this time. But after the cost of the tickets, you know, balloon the next day for me that that was out and then i found out that i hadn't booked my hotel long enough so i had to extend it a day and we'll talk about the prospect of them adding a third date uh but mark did you even peak or have you just been so wrapped up in what's important to you your music and your world um, no i did i mean when i went on let's put it this way i went on facebook in the morning because i i gotta get up early because shadow likes getting up at 7 a.m to go for his walk so i had to be up early with him I went on my phone and already saw people, you know, with all these jaw dropping pictures on their Facebook saying, how much is it for a ticket? Like when they were posting it and I was like, okay, you know what? It, it, it sounds like it's gonna be pricey. I'll check a little bit later. Uh, and it's not in, it's in, it's pricey to go to Toronto, obviously. Uh, but I didn't do, I didn't grab any tickets yet, mainly because I've had a couple of people contact me and say that there might be a couple of options that we might be able to do for a Toronto show. One of them being, and I'm not keeping my hopes up for this, but I do have a family member who does have access to a box at the at the arena. So if if that's the case, and if he can get it, then I'll be able to go into the to the, the the VIP box to nice. to check it out instead of going into the where the minions are, right? So oh god, for the last Madison Square Garden and uh, LA show, Staples Centers, I tried to get boxes for both of those. I wouldn't like to think what Madison Square Garden box prices were yeah, if they were even available. Uh, but uh, uh not no. Well, because we, this is a company box that my friend's father has, so if there's a there's a chance that we might be able to get in there because he's he's done it before for us, right? For other shows like Guns and Roses and stuff like that, right? All right. right, so this is a this is a good point, uh, Ken. Before I get to you, do the uh, tickets come with a happy ending? No, they don't. Even, they don't even come with the physical tickets. They're all mobile tickets for this one. The last ever Kiss shows don't come with a physical ticket. That's I mean, I'm sure you'll be able to buy one at the show commemorative <laughs> for eighty nine thousand um, dollars. But you're not getting the ticket in, included in the price of your ticket. Ken, sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 it's okay. I, I was just say I did not, I didn't, I did not even look at tickets. I did not even. I kind of went in um, thinking that if there was nothing really out here locally, I wasn't going to do it, and I wasn't going to do 
the New York thing because I felt, you know, it's it's not the end. <laughs> That's what I feel. Uh, Las, Vegas. Las Vegas. They come to Las Vegas. I'll go. You know, that's uh, Ken. That's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I saw them a couple of years ago. I saw them three years in a row. You know, yeah. nineteen or twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, or whatever it was. Nineteen, um, twenty, and twenty-one. Okay, and uh, you know, did pretty. I, I spent a good bundle of money on, especially the last two um, shows. Um, for you know being right up front you know yeah. front row so that cost a lot of money and that was that was figured, the one i was sick for wasn't it you know i had front the row second right one. next to the second one i had front row and, and uh yeah and the other stuff mm -hmm. and i had to walk away from it because mm -hmm. i was sick oh yeah wow. yeah it's unfortunate you missed that one actually but uh well actually it's probably good for me because you know you, eric <laughs> singer probably would have given you the sticks instead of me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He would have gotten, he would have gotten, two, gotten them two times. You know? he was, he was, if he'd seen, if he'd seen me there again, he was like, "This time I'm going to hit the fucker." You know? Yeah, yeah. So you're I not, didn't really you're not catching it. this one, fat boy. Yeah, and what's what's funny is, is you know, Lonnie, when you were uh, looking and you said you look at the right side, you're just clicking on those that list of tickets that they have. You know, there. I usually when I go in, I usually go. I open the the floor, expand it, and and you know, click on the actual it's all seat. Great. Um, it was all gray. Fun. Yeah, that's not how this They're all gray? Again. Yeah, this was not normal. Oh, really? No. Okay. Well, nothing about it was normal. <laughs> <laughs> nothing about it was normal. Yeah, so I I'm just going to wait. Uh, I, I know they're going to do something again. Uh, I could be wrong, but you know, if they don't do something again and if New York is the last show, I'm still happy with, with uh, the amount of times <clears throat> I've seen them and, and, and all the shows, so. Are you saving your money for a pay-per-view, Ken? <laughs> pay-per-view. You know, no. But you know what? That's like a, not after <laughs> Dubai. Would you do a pay-per-view for December 2nd? That's a tough <laughs> call. That's a tough call. If they can guarantee it. You know, but, but we're, joking about, we're joking about this, though. But the funny thing is that there there is a $6,000 fan package available to, on Weird. this thing, which oh, is which, I can't believe they actually had the balls to do this after still this brouhaha with the Dubai thing that they have the balls to offer these kind of packages still. Why don't you like get rid of the stuff that you owe still to people first before you offer these ridiculous six thousand dollar packages for pre-show dinner, a New York City landmark restaurant, and hundred fifty dollar merchandise oh, yes. voucher to be? Uh, come on, man! Again, more shit you're not gonna get probably. Uh, it, it'll be quite interesting to see what kind of crowd that comes to the final concerts because I've seen a lot of uh, people from Sweden that mm -hmm. that are going to this concert, and I guess it will be kind of an uh, eclectic crowd with, with people from all over the world. I think it will be quite exciting. Yeah, so people are flying in from everywhere. I mean, yeah. it, it really is... Um, you know, insane. I want to get your guys' thought. Let's start moving into some of these other topics about these final shows. And, you know, one thing that did come up was the, the cost of VIP prices for the final <laughs> run of shows. Yeah. Um, Inflation. Well, $6,000 for yeah, I just read that December the 1st and 8000 <laughs> for the other. And... Oh, Jesus Christ. This is insane. Yeah? You can That's you can insane. you can inquire for prices for stage played uh, instruments now. Oh. You know, you know how I would handle that mm. is I would say please inquire for the cost of a stage played Paul Stanley guitar, and um, I'd ask him, well, how much are you willing to pay? And I would pay. I, I would. I would set my baseline on that. <laughs> I would pay that price if I was going to a like. Creatures of the Night concert. How much did you pay oh. for those tickets, Ken? How much did you pay oh. when? You... Uh, not much. <laughs> not much. Probably, probably, they're, they're probably around. around I would pay like six probably like uh, between ten and fifteen dollars. Oh, like yeah. but see With that the... Josh Hoffner guy just said there's six thousand bucks and there's not even a meet and greet. Yeah, there's no per no personal interaction. Is that, that's horseshit? Okay, six thousand bucks. Do you get your picture with them? 
No. Uh, no meet and greet. See. I, I don't remember if there's a, a picture component on that. Um, again, because I'm not even interested in it. But you know, it's it's just to the point that the cash out is now that they're going to be changing guitars every verse. It every does chorus. include a ticket, though. It says. Oh, God. <laughs> well, you're verse. you're in the pits. You're in the pit. So, you know, you are up ahead. It really is the ultimate experience. There, there's nothing better. You might even get to keep a blood cup if you manage to catch it, unlike Ken, who did get a blood cup and had to give it back because we've sold that to someone. You have to give it back to us. Unbelievable. What is his DNA? Nine, nine tenths of the all. I have a blood uh, cup. <laughs> Julian, do you think the old school fans are <laughs> after that? I don't know. I think a lot of old school fans probably said, well, we saw the band in 2000 and said goodbye to the originals. And since then, it's become an increasingly limping hunchback of a band, um, you know, with one injury after a next, another. And Paul's just tweeted today that he had a bike crash last month and fractured his hip <laughs> yeah. uh, and dinged his knee. And it's his first bike ride back today. So, mm. you know, the wheels of the bus are falling off at this point. But it's still, you're saying farewell to a touring entity. The band is never truly over. And, you know, Gene has already, well, well let's go straight into this. Um, despite the final show announcement, Kisses Gene Simmons says that it would be nice to do a Vegas residency. Ken, you mentioned you'd go to Vegas. What are your thoughts on that? After the final shows, after the cruise, which it's already, I believe, announced that they're going to be doing the acoustic sail away out of makeup. Um, yeah. You know, what do you think about the possibility of them doing festival dates here and there, uh, or maybe a, a residency after the fact? They're not touring. Yeah, I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're gonna do those things like Monsters of Rock or whatever uh, festivals. You know, if you pay them, they're gonna, they'll do it. Um, but actually, you know, touring, full board, you know, month, you know, week to week, day by day. I think that's that's the end of that. Um, but I think yes, they they will do the Vegas residency, and um, I mean everyone's doing it anyway. You know, and they did do it once already, um, but I, I'd definitely go. I'd want to, you know, see that, and I'd want to go check out the, you know, the mini golf thing and the museum and all that uh, that I haven't seen. So I think it would be, a, you know, a good time. And it's not that far away, really. Kiss Monster Mini Golf is always super fun, and there's a good curry house in that uh, hotel as well. Daniel, you just shelled out a bunch of money for coin. Would you be uh, for coin for tickets? Uh, would you be offended if they did a residency? And you know, what other things do you think would be acceptable after the end of the road, so to speak? No, not really. I'm just happy if they continue um, as long as they can, you know, uh, perform uh, good enough. Uh, and I was happily you know pleasantly surprised last year when i when i was in stockholm and and saw a concert with kiss i think it was way better than i could imagine uh, so um you know as long as they don't embarrass themselves i have no problem <laughs> but 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 it's getting borderline embarrassing you know with all the this is kiss buddy with the bears yeah, yeah, themselves yeah, but, but i just watched i just watched uh the show the, the opening night for the revenge tour the, today and it, what a throwback and i kind of remembered uh, how i what i liked about the band you know the energy uh the heaviness <laughs> that's uh, a lifetime ago dude and that's a lifetime ago i know but 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 you can see some uh, you know bits and pieces of that still i think i, I still enjoy <laughs> seeing watching them live and i think you would do that as well mark if you just would you know buy that ticket for toronto <laughs> you will regret it if you don't go i, I you should go. For that I don't show. know, dude. I mean, I, I I've yeah, seen them lots of times. Okay, yeah, I me mean, too, but but I, I mean, look, I understand what you're saying, and 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 that there is some validity to it. That you know, maybe you know, one last hurrah. It might it might sit well with me to kind of go out with the final show. And you know, like I said, I'm not saying no to it totally. Uh, I'm just not kind of gunning gung ho for it right now. Right. No. I mean, it's November. And I mean, I have a lot of time to kind of work out stuff with my friends to do that still. Right. So 
I'm not too not too worried about that. But I, I don't know what it is. I, and I'm trying to be honest here with you guys. This whole Vegas thing, I don't know. It just kind of rubs me the wrong way a bit. I mean, here you are preaching and going online and going on to TV shows and this and that. And this is the end. Bye-bye, everybody. And then already talking about doing shit again. It's like 2001 all over again, you know? Like, are you done or are you not done? Like, no, wrap it up. You know? Change like, is just a car wash away. I mean, I mean yeah, but, or bumping but, into a in, bump into the star into the car wash guy down at Starbucks. And I'll, and I'll tell you Final something. Tour. And I'll tell you something. Uh, and this might not go well with the Kiss fans and the Kiss people in the in the chat yeah. here, but I mean, yes, just released a new single for their new album that I put out, and I'm far more excited about that than anything that Kiss is doing right now, to be honest with right now. But Less you know. Me. But, you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because, yes, to having, you know, called it quits two or three times or whatever, you know. I'm, I'm just, I, I love Kiss. I really do. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't love them, okay? But, I don't know, just already they're talking about a Las Vegas residency. Like, why don't you give Paul some time to actually rest a bit? I mean, isn't he the one who was freaking out about Gene saying 100 more shows? Well, they never said they were totally done. They never said that this was the end of Kiss. They said this was pretty much the end of Kiss, the final show of the end of the road tour. And semantics <laughs> are everything. You don't think they've said anything that hasn't been vetted through a lawyer for a loophole or just a, you know, or just a car wash guy. I mean, it is not the end of the road. Kiss will never be over and done with as, with Gene and Paul in some manner because they are Kiss. You can't jettison another one of them. Um so there's always been a gotcha. Lonnie, would you go to Vegas? And um, would you actually like the idea of going to Vegas? Is that your wife, Rebecca? I got to be careful. My wife is obviously. Yeah, she just, she just, she just, she just, careful. I think, I think it's funny that we were announced, we announced these shows, for the, we announced the dates for these final shows and basically in the same breath, we say, ah, oh, well, we might go to, we might do Vegas too. I'm like, at the end of the day, what is? I, I, I know people are spending room. thousands and thousands of dollars for these last shows and New York shows, but what's the allure of these last New York shows? If in mm. the same breath we're, exactly. are, we're already Thank talking you, about Vegas, and I don't, I don't think we'll announce these Vegas shows if there are Vegas shows until at least December third. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow, right. Yeah. Wow. If you want but to see I, Kiss again, correct. Correct. Yeah. I, yeah. I, there's, there's no way this that'll be in stone prior to December third. As <laughs> long as there is money for that, that to get, they will play. We will play that up as long as possible. But I, I mean, come on. A commenter here earlier said, "Well, they, they've never said that they were done." Like, well, I don't know. I, I saw Kiss on the farewell tour 23 <laughs> years ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah. think we have played this card before. Uh, yeah. and, 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 no, and no, and no, the tour in 2000 was not labeled Farewell to Ace and Peter. I know some people who kissed Gene and yeah. Paul's ass and, said, and think they've never done anything yeah. wrong in their life say, no, no, that was the Farewell to Ace and Peter. But you yeah. know what? My tour short from 2000 does not say on the back Farewell Ace and Peter. Yeah. It says Farewell exactly. Tour. Right. Anyway. But... I do think it's funny that in the same breath we're announcing these shows, we're already alluding to the fact that, oh, we're not really done. So <laughs> exactly. Would I go, would, but the answer to Julian's question, would I go to that? Yeah, the answer's already been posted for you. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I saw them in 2019 with my brother who I saw, who introduced me to the band, who took me to my first Kiss show. I, I'm i good. Although it did although it did strike me Monday morning, like, if I could do this, I might. But right now I'm done. But I, you know, like Kiss, I may change my mind. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick has another good point here. You know, look at how many times we've all seen Kiss since the 2000 Farewell Tour. Sure. I've seen them over 20 times. Yeah. And I'm grateful for every one of those. I'm <laughs> still too. grateful yeah. for every one of those. Yeah, sure. 
I have I have absolutely no complaint about those shows. I saw what mm. three on the farewell tour and Psycho Circus. You know, had my first front row experience on the farewell tour. Um, you know, so I, I have a lot of gratitude to those years of the of the reunion and for all the additional years that I got to see the band and see songs like Love Them and Leave Them played live and All the Way played live and mm -hmm. meet Peter Chris in 2003 on the meet and greets and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Have a drumstick thrown at you, you know, in 2020. Uh, and also to have seen shows with Ken, to have seen shows with other friends um, as well. That, again, is what is so important. Not necessarily that it's the final shows of the end of the road tour or whatever spin they want to put on it with their fingers crossed and, you know, and any of that. It's to be, again, in a place like Madison Square Garden. I think I said it in the last show when we talked about it briefly. This was the one venue that when they walked by it as young men, they said, one day I'm going to play there. I know Peter Chris certainly said that, um, you know, that that was kind of the measuring stick for success for them as individuals growing up. And I'm going to be in, in that same, you know, place under that roof. And hopefully the New York crowd will not be a bunch of limp, wet towels this time like they were in 2019. <laughs> um, yeah which was just horrendous as a show. I'm okay. hoping for a, a do-over for Madison Square Garden. New York, I'm giving you a second chance. Mm -hmm. Real quick, know. real quick, Julian, I just have to say, you can't go to a Kiss show and not have a good time. It's impossible. So all you guys out oh, well, there... If, if, if you're in front of a wall at a Kiss show, yes, you can not have a good <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, but you just go through that wall, you know. Uh, but... but uh, I just have to say, uh, and a, an additional thing is that the Kiss FAQ podcast has, of course, opened a lot of doors for all, all of us. Uh, I enjoy going to a concert and, you know, kind of being recognized and being talked to, to by Kiss fans. And they, they show their appreciation of the Kiss FAQ podcast that they've done for so many years. So I think that has opened an, an additional door. You know, you go to the concert and people approach you. And I think... That's just real fun and, and an additional thing that makes it even more fun. You're kind of, and it has opened up a lot of doors for me at least, and I think for a lot of you guys, you know, um, into the Kiss community. And, so, are you saying, yeah. Daniel, that we should start making like personalized merch for the FAQ, like Daniel posters that we can sell? No, I think Ken has opened up that, uh, you know, that door a little bit. Uh, you know, he had an idea a few weeks back. Uh, oh, the vinyl, yeah. Maybe Ken can elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, Ken. I think I think we've got a really yeah. good live audience right now. We got over <laughs> sixty people watching us oh, um, because I'm down with the idea. The people who support us are listening right now, and I think it'd be great to have them pick out some of the things that you were talking about for that concept. So p make your pitch, Ken, man. Well, I think I. <laughs> Come on, I you I just, can do it. Oh. I, I, all right. So it was late at night. And I <laughs> you were a little bit drunk. A little bit you know, or something, but uh, yeah, I had this idea. I thought, you know, it'd be good to, you know, do something kind of different and uh, that no one's really done that. You don't see podcasts do or whatever. I thought of putting in a, a, a vinyl uh, album together of kind of like the, you know, best moments from uh, uh, the Kiss FAQ, you know, podcast um, uh, snippets of little things here and there. Um, it probably sell as well as the Johnny Carson uh, <laughs> moments on Casablanca <laughs> back in the seventies. They almost killed Casablanca, but you know, I thought it would be kind of fun to do. Uh, put that out there, and it, the proceeds could go to you know the Kiss FAQ to keep you know this running and, and the whole bit <laughs> to to, no. to Julian <laughs> to Julian. Um, no, if there were any proceeds, I'd rather they go to a kind cancer of fun charity. To do. I, I don't know. I thought it was just an interesting something. No, it's that it, it it's something that I, I it's something that I've thought of in the past, but I can't be arsed to do it. To go back and listen to the shows when we're participating in them, in them it it's yeah. it's, a, it's a conversation with friends. It you know it's easier to ask people out there who listen to this show on a regular basis or are listening for the first time. What are some of your favorite moments? You know, when someone put a quarter in Lonnie. You know, what were some of his most wow, outrageous wow, wow. Uh, wow. 
monologue. Bunch of wow, wow segments. Yeah. Um, wow. You know? Wow. Where where was just have he? wow. You know, sixty minutes of wow from wow. Lonnie. That's, that's that'll be the break between the segments. Every time a segment you, is done, I'll go wow. wow. Next segment. <laughs> wow. Next you, segment. You can. You can find him probably all the way back to episode three. When I yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that yeah, was a thing back like, then, you know, with in, in the seventies. You know, jo- Johnny Carson had that yeah. thing. But I had bombed. An actually, bombed. Oh yeah, yeah. I actually had an album of you know. I don't know if anyone remembers this show, but you have to be older. But you know, all in the family, all in the family. I had an actual vinyl of that. It was kind of like these parts of wow. different shows and. You know this comedy stuff, and uh, you know it, it was something I had, and I thought it was kind of cool at the time when I had it. But uh, yeah, it's All right, so just it's an out, idea. It's out there, just it's an out idea there for our listeners. It's uh, here's Lonnie yeah. magic moments from the Kiss FAQ podcast. You know, so yeah, but, but but that leads us to a quite interesting question. What are your favorite moments from the Kiss FAQ podcast? I mean, you've been doing this for almost a decade. If you could pick one thing or one show that you liked, what would it be? Just off the top of my head, I really enjoyed one show that I wasn't a part of. It was when you guys did uh, the Carnival of Souls tour. You know, what if there was a Carnival of Souls tour uh, or torment? Uh, (laughs) But but, uh, uh, I really enjoyed that episode. I think you guys had a lot of you know interesting takes on that uh so i would put something from that show on the the vinyl but i don't know what it costs to press the vinyl but maybe mark can help us with that two thousand canadian for a hundred albums two thousand canadians for a hundred albums yeah i had that thing about a pressing pan here (laughs) (laughs) it's actually not a bad deal it's not bad yeah it's not bad i mean at 30 you know you could charge 30 bucks a pop. For yeah, and then you'll make and money you, back on it. You still have, yeah, a yeah. little bit of a well, profit. Yeah, you so. get a lot of other costs to cover. So, you know, let's yeah. let's see if yeah. we can come up with like 60 minutes of uh, magic moments from this show. Uh, <laughs> certainly not from this episode. <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. But, but, but what you guys say? Do you have any favorites, favorite moments? I mean, you've been doing this for almost a decade. Well, I, I, I like you have one or two. I like when we did some of those like recreations or rethinks of the albums. Like when we did like, you know, we talked about like hot in the shade, like redoing the whole list of the songs and we made like an alternate album cover for it and stuff like that. Like those kind of episodes I've always liked. That's a long time ago. Yeah. When we did those, I, I, I enjoyed those. Uh, more recently, I thought that when we had the whole Sam Loomis leak, those episodes are, are really fun to talk about. I thought those are, those are good. Disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they would be were they were fun to talk yeah, about, you know. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm glad I wasn't on them. No. Yeah, I don't know that. I thought the one episode uh, where I don't know where it was coming from, <laughs> but it was like this: the flatulence was happening. I love Tom. I think it, I think it was uh, uh, Mark's one of Mark's little things he has with him uh, that was making that noise. But we were we just kind of lost it. Isn't that, that sweet from oh. Jordan? Isn't Thank that you, Jordan. sweet from Jordan Davidson? Oh, oh, nice! Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's impossible for me to pick a, a favorite episode. I've in- enjoyed some of the ones um, where we've had guests participating. I mean, I love our regular crew. Yeah. Um, but when we had James Campion on to be a part of the Destroyer yeah. uh, breakdown that when good. that box set came mm-hmm. down, uh, came out, that was yeah. really fun. Again, because I juggle, you know, usually being at the steering wheel, um, it doesn't give me as much free reign to kind of be a participant because i'm trying to keep things moving along i'm looking at the clock because as mark knows i like to keep the shows to about an hour you know um yes. you know because usually it's like after this it's i'm cooking dinner so you know i'm, I'm juggling things but um i also don't want to have a, a show that goes two hours i was on one podcast that hit three hours once and that was just wow. I, yeah i mean multiple. if you remember the the dubai thing <laughs> it was like Three and a half hour or something. Yeah, that's that was good to buy episodes. But that was that was fun. Yeah, that, yeah, that was that, fun. That was super fun that doing was that live to buy it. It was long. But it, it was long, but it had context at least with the oh, yeah. pre-show and everything else that yeah. was going on. And you're you're 
I mean, it's no different than sitting around in someone's, you know, living room um, watching mm -hmm. a football game. Then, well, you know, everyone's got to get up eventually and go to the restroom or get more coffee. Well, you know, if if there is some kind of pay-per-view for that for that last show or, you know, maybe like a, a Friday, Saturday type package for the last shows. I know obviously Julian will be at them, but maybe maybe the rest of us can do some kind of some kind of live watch. True, you know, that might yeah. be yeah. that might be yeah. that might be really yeah, fun. Be cool. Just no, no, yeah. I'm not buying the gold and oh yes, you are. package on that with all the but they offer a vinyl you're supposed you to get. Julian can stream the concerts using his mobile, and then we can talk about it. I tried that in Vancouver, and yeah, everyone everyone was eating the Wi-Fi. Um, there's still ah. some of that video up on this channel. It was I'm, mm -hmm. you know, when I go to these shows, my phone's going away. I might just take a couple of quick pics here and there, but I'm just going to be in the moment. I'm gonna. I want it to be like that moment was um, front row with Ken at that show, where it was just I wasn't doing anything other than being enveloped by the show so that was you know really where where it was super fun but there's, again, i agree we're talking that about fun episodes we, that vancouver episode sure got a whole lot of listens on youtube i know uh, and i oh. don't know how many it got outside so i think it, it's one of oh our shit you're right that first popular, show on the end of the road most, because it's i came back from the show we did an episode shows, yeah 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 i think alex was yeah, on that, it that, and, uh, a few and and you guys that was a good one and another good one was when uh we did the kiss the gene simmons vault when when uh julian got oh, his vault yeah. and opened it and but that was a good episode <clears throat> too. and i was wait and i was waiting for my vault for weeks and i was uh oh yeah. after, after them so. on that one until i finally it finally arrived the ever torture this, this is a burning question uh it was from a jordan ending, who's been so nice to us <laughs> Will you guys continue this show when Kiss ends? Kiss will well, Lonnie? Never end. Yeah, I Lonnie. think Kiss so. will never we'll end. We'll go on the farewell. <laughs> we will go on a farewell tour. <laughs> for real. Yeah, yeah, we won't. I don't think so because Kiss is going to continue in some form or fashion, especially with the merchandise they keep releasing. And hopefully they'll yeah. do other things, hopefully, that uh, the fans will enjoy. So that's a great um, topic. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Is that we saw something yesterday about 50th anniversary with the first album and Hotter Than Hell and then oh, yeah. 50th yeah. anniversary oh, yeah. of, yeah, of that, Dress yeah. to Kill in 2025, 50th anniversary. Epic, of, epic of, race. Yeah. So, so what's the deal with that? Is anybody, Destroy. I mean, obviously they're going to get you again, 50th anniversary, all these albums. I mean, they're going to continue taking my money for years to come if we're going to keep celebrating 50th anniversaries of all these albums whenever they hit 50 years. Well, are they? Because how how is the band celebrated fiftieth anniversary so far? Nothing. Mm, they don't do anything. They they they've announced Poughkeepsie. <laughs> what that picture yeah. was from Epic Rights, I believe, was merch licensing opportunities. Um, I've seen there have been videos that used to circulate um, to prospective licensees through the various companies associated with the business side of the band for opportunities arising. So here are the albums that are coming up in the next few years that will have anniversaries of significant um, stature attached to them. Um, you know, give us a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars or a billion dollars let's go all austin powers there for your opportunity to be the excuse exclusive licensee in this area but i didn't see it that's just a guess from it um you know this show is a kiss show and i think this you know is a good example kiss is never over there is always something new to be discovered and discussed always something to explore and always something to complain about <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. That, that has been fixed, out. thankfully. Well, you know, with that, that thing, I talked about this over the last couple of days, and it was this is kind of in a way off subject, but you know, Kiss is always out there somehow, somewhere it pops up, and I guess the 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 song Baby Driver popping yeah. up on, on America's I mean it wasn't the KISS version of it, but uh someone else covering it, but it was on America's you know funniest videos, and then just last night, I was watching the Tonight Show recording of Jimmy Fallon, and uh, and they had the guest on there was Adam Dry Adam Driver, and the band The Roots yeah. started playing the music, and I'm like, I'm <laughs> like, cool. what the hell? 
<laughs> it's like the two two in the same i mean yeah. baby driver they're playing baby driver i'm like the roots are playing baby driver are you kidding me i thought wow that's just i mean obviously kiss is deep just, cut from their love reach is way out there and uh maybe you know quest love uh, quest love is a secret that kiss admirer i don't know yeah no that was really cool to see that and especially for it to be a peter song and a little bit more obscure it was extra cool there have been a couple of uh comments about uh rumors uh about mm. product don't believe anything until it's officially announced and for sale well not even for sale because magic didn't go so well but um <laughs> wow oh but in, in in terms of official in terms of official product things people may hear bits and pieces here and there and blab about them but things change so until it is up on kiss online in those cases it doesn't matter who the person is saying it um take anything with a pinch of salt because not everything is as you might hope or we want and it's nothing worse than to tell a kiss fan something and then have it change because then they're let down and they think it's the band's fault so anyone who does hear bits and pieces needs to be careful about that um How, however uh, you know the episode featuring magic on kiss faq <laughs> could be one of the things on the greatest hits album from the kiss faq podcast there's some hilarious quotes in that episode that we could use I that's the section that's the lawyers i can't delete it yeah that's the <laughs> it's, it's gonna be broken the final is gonna be broken out into four pieces kind of parts and one part is going to be lies and that that magic part will be oh on the lies section of it. it's coming so out the this book. year <laughs> The brain's on camera. <laughs> All right, so here's a, a good comment from Nick. Uh, thank you, Nick, by the way. Uh, will any of you guys be getting the record, stay Eric Car record Store Day Eric Carr vinyl? And let me also add to that the new Ace Frehley singles 21st yeah. century singles box set. yeah I that, that that. i'm interested in that you i was are? waiting for it to get announced nope. finally because nope. i've I'm known about it for a while um and i think it's really cool but then again i've got the cassette box set behind me mm -hmm. and i think it's really neat and i wish kiss would do one for their um last three <laughs> studio albums make uh, oh. seven inch singles from psycho circus sonic boom and monster for the singles that were issued to mm -hmm. radio would be a very nice little thing Isn't so can sonic boom now on which wasn't on streaming is it's now on streaming it's on, yeah it's on stream so that that Universal. kind of tells me tells me something that they can do something with that um mm -hmm. i'm thinking well they got the rights back right so well it's good album. Like it. they can is such a large word <laughs> can do well is such a big concept <laughs> well, um, yeah exactly will and anything actually eventuating but going back to both of those products uh the eric uh, eric car uh, record star day anyone interested and the singles can i'll start with the, you and then we'll go to mark if if, if it's all right uh, if i if i see the eric car one um i'll probably get it if i once i like i'm i plan on going to a record store a record store day so uh get a couple of of vinyls out on that day but uh if i see it uh, i'm sure i'm gonna just grab it but if i if i don't get it then i'm not worried about it i'm not, I'm not worried that i don't have to have it um as for the ace thing um i saw it and i just thought i didn't i didn't like the the selections of all the songs that I, uh, on Ooh. those discs. i would have i would have maybe gotten it but uh oh, it's okay um, I do have the Kiss one that they did, you know, some years back, the vinyl and the CD versions, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do the Ace one. Mark? Um, I might I might grab it. I mean, it depends because on Record Store Day, I'm already itching to grab that Yes live album from 72 that they're releasing and also the uh, Porcupine Tree, the Record Store Day album that's coming out. But if it's, you know, if I still have money left over, then I, I would probably grab the Eric Carr thing just to, you know, support the whole KISS cause, I guess. But I like that Ace uh, singles thing. I, I, when I saw it the other day, I was like, hmm, it actually kind of did catch my attention, which is kind of rare because usually those kind of things don't really interest me much for some reason. But the, the Ace one looks good. I think I might actually get it. So Did you get the yeah. KISS singles one? Did you ever get I got that? the CD, CD version of it. CD I, version I of that? Yeah. A vinyl? Okay. That's really cool. Box. 
Is yeah, I like that one. It was that, it was cool. Um, I'll I'll I will definitely be getting the the Eric Carr record store day. That, I think that's really cool the way they did that, especially with that. The artwork is the cool. Maybe it might be the coolest thing about it, but I think that's really cool the way they they've done that. No one I'll definitely be looking for that and pick it up. And as far as the Ace thing, I'm kind of with Ken. Like, it doesn't excite me a whole lot. Had it been maybe you started with Fraley's comment, that might have been cool. But the, yeah. the twenty first the, tw <laughs> the twenty first century Ace stuff doesn't ex excite me as much. No. Hmm. Okay, Daniel. All right. Does it excite you? <laughs> no, I think I'm saving my money for the Julian Gill book, you know, on tour 83 or 84, 83, I guess, 83. Do, yeah. and on worth. I think I'm saving my money for that one because I really enjoy the first one. I just read it like a few weeks back for the first time and <laughs> had a few I good think. laughs. Oh, <laughs> you know, some of the uh, concert reviews were hilarious. <laughs> And uh, that's the one. I'm hoping you have you have a lot of uh, concert reviews from the Revenge tour. Holy shit! Oh, um, and this it's 490 pages, and yeah. I've yeah. added like 180 tour <laughs> ads, over 100 more reviews. I mean, wow. I wouldn't be putting mm -hmm. it out if it didn't have a substantial amount of updates and revisions to it. Um, and that's why it's been, I think, two well, three years since the last, um, you know, update. So I, I used to want to do these things yearly, but we got lost in COVID, so that made it impossible. Mm -hmm. So it's got a ton more. And I've also spent a lot more time on the European side of things, um, expanding those sections. I, I mean, mm -hmm. translating French reviews, um, Dutch, had some help on some Scandinavian languages. So there, there's a lot more in there. Um, and I, I think it's worth it. Plus they're being, you know, priced as cheap as possible just because they've been out there for so long. Um, you know, it's not the right market to be, you know, pricing it at kiss prices. That's $600. I hope. Fuck no. <laughs> no like Daniel, I thought you were saving your money for when kiss you comes hope? back to Sweden in 2024. <laughs> well, I, I got some money for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they're coming back, I'll be. Let's there. end on uh, two questions. We'll just go around okay. uh, around the table here. Gene Simmons, an evening with the Gene Simmons band, will perform a short set, and even Paul is tweeting that a good time is guaranteed for Hall. Um, you know, for just four thousand nine hundred ninety-five, Lonnie, oh God, you can come home with a wow. plate and a box. Of Gene's <laughs> junk, no Gene's wow, wow, wow! A, a lot of stuff that Gene's held on to, to for years. His crew have been personally curating for him to cherry pick items that will be of interest to the discerning Kiss fan. Uh, a celebrity, mm. a, cele a, uh, a celebrity <laughs> chef cooked dinner. Uh, too many C's in that. Um, <clears throat> you know, and they've added a night. So, does that interest you? Um. <laughs> My, my it's wife in Vegas. commented. My wife has commented. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, uh, for, I, I think it's funny that they've added a night. Obviously, it interests some if they've already added a night. And I've said before here, I'm not, I'm not one to tell people how to spend their money. If, if that's what you want to do, and yeah. if that's what brings you joy, go ahead and do it. For me. An evening with Gene Simmons and a plate and a short set by his band for four grand doesn't really doesn't really do it for me. But if that's what you want to do, pizza. more power to you. Yeah. If you like Brussels sprouts or pizza, and burnt pizza, <laughs> it's your chef. That would be Chef absolutely Paul. outstanding. That'd be Chef fantastic. Paul Stanley. I He's would, cooking pizza. In a, I would love this. Yeah. Oh my God, that would be awesome. That would be cool. That's a good idea. You should mention that to Ian. Oh my God. He's got um, a pizza stone going on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, la last question. Ken, we'll start with you and then Mark, then Lonnie, then Daniel. Um, what would be the letdown for December the 2nd? 
what what would be the worst way they could end the end of the road tour in your in your view whether you're there or not um what would yeah just what would be a letdown for the final show i i think that the biggest letdown would be is that you know they they finished the last song they come back out to do their final vows you know half in tears and saying we've had such a great time we're not gonna. We're not gonna cancel. We're gonna come back and tour next year. <laughs> I, I can. I can see them already saying uh, something like that. Like you know, that that'd be the worst way to end it because th th that would truly give this no, you know, value at all. This sort of farewell show. But I, I, I don't think they would be that foolish. I could be wrong, but you never know. I think they're going to announce that before. Uh, I think we'll hear the announcement in Q3 for Vegas residency, by the way. I say um, December 3rd. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, December the 7th, another day that will live in somewhat infamy. Um, Ken, mm -hmm. what, what would be the major letdown for you after the end of the road? <laughs> the major letdown would be if they don't, they really do end it there. <laughs> That would be the letdown for me is that they really do end it, oh. you know, you know, fool me. Um, so I, I'm hoping that they don't end it. Um, the only other letdown is it's too bad that, you know, Ace, Peter, or Bruce uh, could, can, can't, you know, join them just on the stage one night. Um, you know, that's how they marketed the darn thing when they started this whole tour. And oh, we were inviting them to you know come join us on stage and all this, but it's turned out to be a bunch of probably BS. So um, that's the part that I wish would happen, but it's not. It's probably not going to happen. But again, that they actually did stop the tour and they are and they didn't tour anymore. No Las Vegas, no one else. Then then it'd be kind of a bummer to me because. I, I expect them to continue. All right, Daniel. You guys uh, have valid points, but for me, the worst case scenario would be if they had this total Mille Vanilli moment. You know, Paul is <laughs> totally <laughs> off cue for rock and roll all night or for one of the final songs he toyed Rock City, and they just <laughs> completely blow it, and that's the final show. That would be crazy. Yeah, right. well, you never Gene's, know. Gene singing and, and, and Paul's voice comes out, or vice versa, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, it would be so okay. embarrassing. All right, Lonnie, what would be your letdown? I think my letdown would be is if these final two shows in New York are exactly like every other show from the end of the road tour. Uh oh. And you there's nothing, and there's nothing special or nothing different about that. As much hype has been given to them the last week or so since they've been announced, if they're just like every other show in of the end of the road tour, well, what's the point? Yeah, it's a good point. It's a very I good think point. They need to do one thing between now and the final show, and that is to go to the studio and record a version of Life in the Woods so that instead of God gave rock and roll to you playing at the end, they can just kick in Life in the Woods and have the people do the conga line out the doors when they leave. Um, <laughs> you know, just, the biggest letdown would be final song, final rap, December the 2nd, Paul Stanley swinging the mic. All right, we'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> because if they announce a December the 3rd show or any show after that, I think that would be probably the biggest kick in the balls possible after all the hype all the drama of people trying to get mm -hmm. tickets for these final shows, the people who are committing and flying in, uh, booking travel arrangements and all that shit. Mm -hmm. um, money is more important than anything else. It will also mess up the symmetry of 50-50. But then again, KISS has always been a 50-50 proposition, right? So 50 mm -hmm. shows in their 50th year. Um, we're all on borrowed time to a certain extent. So that would be the biggest letdown for me if we don't get there. Mm. you know and just by grace will everyone who's got tickets will attend and you know it's to all the people that won't be there whether it's because they couldn't afford tickets couldn't get tickets they wanted to be there that's gonna suck 
because as you know, Brian mentioned, Brian's a great guy. Um, it's a completely different proposition going to shows now that, than it was when this band started. You have to be special mm -hmm. to be able to get a fucking ticket in many cases. There are mm -hmm. many people who can't afford these prices or to travel in. Back when tickets were, what, what was my first show? I think 13 bucks, Stably Roth. Yeah, $16. And, and, yeah. and Tesla yeah. back in 87. Um, yeah, thank you for putting that back up. Yeah, you're you're still saying I was there, just like at the 1977 Alive two shows, <laughs> which is somewhat <laughs> ironic that we are just paying in essence to be there, and a lot of people won't put their fucking phones down the whole time they're there. So that that'll be a letdown if I'm at that last show and there's been nothing but people with their phones up the whole time, or it's like the last Madison square garden where I've got a asshole in front of me, standing his <laughs> teen son on a seat that, that, that he's going to get, you know, back slapped or the, the selfie girls girlfriend, take a picture you know, <laughs> fuck, all through the show. You know, I just hope that it's a good memory. So that when that final note rings out, we just all walk away. I, I don't care if anything happens in the future. I'm just like this to all end nicely. And then we can book the residency tickets next year. All right. There you go. We've had a lot of folks join us with comments today. I want to thank you all for taking the yes. time to join and give us your thoughts. You know, Ken had a great idea. You know, what are your magical moments from this podcast? We've been doing this a long time. We're still having a great time doing it. There's still a lot of topics to be had, mm -hmm. a lot of guitar wars. I'm working on multimedia for the next guitar episode. Um, <laughs> death matches to be had who knows there might be quizzes in the future again just kind of bite nils because he beats us every time <laughs> yeah. uh, you know except yeah. on that revenge show i got him on that revenge yeah show. so uh, you know <laughs> there's a lot of road left for us at least even if kiss is running out of tarmac rapidly uh but put together your thoughts on on the magic moments, give us episodes and timestamps, you know, so that we can go back and listen to them because it'd be good for us to go back and see if we've changed during the course of what, eight or nine years of doing it. Um, and maybe even have enough to put together. If uh, not a vinyl LP, then a, a release of some description or at least a show of some mm -hmm. description. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's it for now. I will, well, we'll be back next week, I think. I'll be around before I go to Nashville. I will be at Rock and Pod, and again, I will be there with a copy of Mask Hysteria if you'd have taken an advance peek at where I'm at. Got a nice interview uh, crowd as well, most of which are KISS-related for some odd reason. But for now, from Lonnie, from Ken, uh, Mark, and Daniel, and myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.